and for further testing and here we are today i got my results back and i was diagnosed with Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to another video. It's your girl Michelle. If you're new to my channel, why not subscribe? I promise you, your girl's a whole vibe. In today's video, I'm going to be opening up about my diagnosis. If you have not checked out my previous video, I'll be sure to link it down below. Just to give you a little understanding of why I'm actually making this video. This video is something that's very sensitive for me, but I feel like it's important to talk about it because I'm sure there are other women who may be going through the same thing or who may be experiencing what I'm experiencing experiencing but hasn't gotten a diagnosis yet before I actually get into this video I just want to give a quick disclaimer I am NOT a professional I am NOT a specialist I am NOT a doctor I can only talk about my experience the things that I've been through so I'm gonna basically just talk about my diagnosis the risk factors as well as the treatment plan so with that being said let's jump right into it I don't want to ramble and I don't really have a whole structure you know of how I want to say this coming straight off the dome if you guys are new and you don't really know me I have three beautiful children I had my first child when I was 22 years old let me rewind that I got my menstrual cycle at the age of 15 and I felt like that kind of was late I was a late bloomer being that a lot of my friends got their menstrual way earlier than me I just felt so awkward and weird like why am I not developing when is puberty gonna start in for me when I first started my menstrual cycle it was like a walk in the park for me I heard a lot of horror stories from other people stating the pain and just how uncomfortable it is during your menstrual cycle. And for a long time, my menstrual cycles were really painless and very short. It wasn't until after having my first child at the age of 22 when I felt like my body kind of changed a little bit. Of course, after bearing a child, your body never really goes back to being normal. I noticed that before my menstrual cycle, I was experiencing a little bit of discomfort. Even during my menstrual cycles, I felt a lot of discomfort as well, which was different from before having children. It was to the point where I could actually deal with it. It was only for like the first, you know, 24 hours. I was just like, woo, this is like, woo. This is reminding me of labor. I just dealt with it, you know, I would take Tylenol, I would lay on a heating pad and just rest up and, you know, before I knew it, I was back like I never left. A couple of years later, when I decided to have another child, I met Eddie and we wanted to start a family together. And the first time that I did get pregnant, fortunately, I had a ectopic pregnancy and I will also link that video either here or here so you guys can check that out, which was definitely something that was very devastating for a woman to have to go through. It left me in an emotional state, emotional roller coaster. I also had to have surgery during that traumatic time for me as well. The doctors were telling me that my chances of having a child after having the surgery, which left me with one fallopian tube, that my chances of getting pregnant would be really, really hard. But by the grace of God, I went on to having another child, which is my second daughter, Mia, which was fairly soon after going through the procedure. God is amazing. I just have to say that before going forward. He has the final say so. So after having my second daughter, you know, the pregnancy was the same like with my first daughter, Lyric, very sick. The regular symptoms of being pregnant. I went through full term with my second daughter as well and everything was all good. After having her, my body definitely changed even more because now that's another baby. I noticed that I started to develop fibroids, which are just non-cancerous growths that, you know, develop inside of the uterus, which are very, very common in African-American women. And it just happened to be me. It's very much so hereditary because my mother had them and other family members as well. So that was something new for me. I developed fibroids and also cysts on my ovaries, which would come once a month and those are very painful as well what scared me is that once i started to have my menstrual cycle the pain began to get worse for me i just kept going on with my life and i was just like well some people just have painful periods it's that and the third and then i went on to having my last child in 2018 i had a little boy who is now three years old and that's when i feel like this was the icing on the cake i feel like after having him my body really really took a turn for the worse with my reproductive system the periods became unbearable debilitating sometimes i wouldn't even be able to get out of the bed it literally felt like i was giving birth all over again every month even before my menstrual cycles before ovulation during ovulation during my menstrual it was just like getting it just got worse and worse for me i was like you know what i need to go to the doctors go to the doctors you know they do a special test on me i forget the name of it once i find out the proper 
test that was taken i'm going to insert it for you guys where they just insert some type of liquid and they go up inside to you know check out my uterus my fallopian tubes ovaries all that it basically glows it so that they can see if anything is abnormal on the skin i went for ultrasounds and stuff like that and it did show that i do have fibroids and i have a few of them in my uterus but nothing too alarming each month was going by i noticed that i was experiencing like more symptoms than normal just more irritated and just a lot of pain if nothing else the pain was what was stopping me from my daily activities of life as a mother as a content creator just a human as an adult you know we have things we need to do so i can't lay up in the bed all day because of this and so i wanted to do something about it I went for further testing and here we are today i got my results back and i was diagnosed with adenomyosis I did a lot of research before I came on here to let you guys know because I had no idea what adenomyosis was until you know my doctor my OBGYN told me what it was so basically it is kind of like cousin to endometriosis which is two separate conditions but kind of similar in the same sense so it causes the uterus to enlarge and swell up which as a result causes chronic pain pelvic pain heavy bleeding prolonged menstrual cycles and it's just a whole mess for your girl with endometriosis the tissue grows on the outside of anywhere it wants to attach to it can attach to the ovaries it can attach to your fallopian tubes even your bowel wherever it feels like it wants to chill at that's where it's gonna go both cause severe pain heavy bleeding and so on and so forth so you can get the two of them mixed up or you can have both of them in my situation i feel like i have both of them this is what's been going on with me so once i was told this i just had to take a second to understand what it was i ask a lot of questions whenever i'm going to the doctor because sometimes you can get a false result and i wanted to just make sure that this is exactly what i have now this is what it is what are we going to do what is the treatment plan for me what can i do to get some type to alleviate the pain to get some type of relief without having to go to the extreme is this going to kill me is this a serious condition it's not a life-threatening condition but it's a very painful condition that can cause many many years of pain many many years of discomfort and if you and you guys know as women if you have painful periods then you understand this is like times 10. how i, I dread getting my menstrual cycle because the symptoms are so severe and honestly I went to a different doctor before my OBG who I have now and she basically said that I had endometriosis as well but because of my age at that time she didn't want to go in and do the laparoscopy because of risk factors of my age. All the symptoms that I described led up to endometriosis but now I got a test to confirm that I have adenomyosis so I asked my doctor is there any way that you can confirm the endometriosis as well because me describing what I go through it does no justice unless you have been in this situation. Now I'm gonna jump into the symptoms. Symptoms that I experience are pelvic pain, lower back pain, literally feels like somebody is going to like my tailbone is somebody's just like ripping it apart heard from a lot of women who have had epidurals that their back hurts because of that any type of lower back pain is just crazy it just it just feels like my body's just detaching i also experience hip pain that radiates down my right leg i experience rectal pain it's like a sharp pain in my rectum i know this may be tmi so if it is then you could just fast forward this part I'm just gonna keep it real with you guys it's all just this whole my lower the middle Part of my stomach all the way going into my rectum down my leg i feel like i'm giving birth and with all three of my children i did natural all natural and i know exactly what that feels like for me ovulation is my most painful part of the whole process even leading up to having my menstrual cycle because i can't move and it's on set it just comes when it wants to i'm never prepared for when it comes i could be out in the store i could be cooking i could just be in the shower whatever once the pain hits i'm down for the count for a good freaking hour or two hours until i take some tylenol advil i can't talk i can't walk all i do is just lay in the fetus position with my knees and and just pray to god that it subsides been getting worse for me each and every menstrual cycle. I also experience heavy bleeding, not so much prolonged periods. My menstrual cycles usually are from like four to five days, four to five days if that, so that's not really a big thing for me, but it's the bleeding. I release a lot of blood clots, very, 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 very hefty ones. Again, TMI, I'm so sorry, but it's just what it is. So a lot of times I feel very tired, I feel very weak i'm very irritated right when i know i'm gonna get my menstrual cycle my hormones are all over the place i just get really emotional i get very very irritated ready to go off it's just i don't know sometimes i don't even like myself because 
of how I react and that's just not okay. I try to acknowledge what's going on and try not to let it allow me to keep acting like that. It's like, okay, I know I'm ovulating. My menstrual about to come in like four days. Snap out of it, stop being a little you know, you need to check yourself. Another new symptom that I've been experiencing before my menstrual comes is night sweats. That is something that really, really, really scared me. I mentioned it to my doctor. It wasn't a really big thing, but to me it is because I'm changing my clothes three or four times throughout the night. My body overheats, but when I wake up, I'm shivering. My clothes are wet. I don't have a temperature. I don't feel sick. I'm just freezing, but yet my bed is full of wet, of water, of sweat, and you can feel the heat from where I was laying. So it's like my body's overheating, but I'm freezing, I'm shaking. This has been an ongoing thing for the last couple of months, right before I get my menstrual cycle. So it's just a lot of different symptoms, but I feel a sense of relief now that I've gotten a diagnosis. I don't feel 100% complete because I know that these other symptoms that I have mentioned, they don't all fit in the category with adenomyosis. They kind of fit in the category with endometriosis as well. I may have both, I don't know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not gonna self-diagnose, but you know your body. You know when something's not right with your body and I've never been one to just run to the doctor unless I feel something consistently going on with my body and I go at the last minute. That's just me, I don't like doctors, I'm afraid of doctors. Now I'm gonna talk about the risk factors with having adenomyosis. It's, it's been told, I don't know, it's been told that, you know, it may cause infertility problems. It may be hard for you to bear a child. I don't know how long I've had it. I don't want to question it. I'm grateful, again, I'm grateful because I was able to have three children, three healthy children with no complications whatsoever besides having the ectopic pregnancy in between um, my second child. I also wanted to know like, how did I get it? Where does it come from? It, it's kind of like an unknown thing, but I've read it that childbirth can increase your risk of having it. Um, middle, middle aged women, prior uterine surgery, C-sections, fibroid removals, and also having a DNC. They don't really have a cause of why women develop this, but it is no joke. Now we're gonna talk about the treatment plan. Honestly, for me, I just feel like I'm gonna have to just do what I don't wanna do. The first treatment plan that I was offered was to just take some hormones. I was a bit hesitant on that because if my hormones are already going crazy on a regular, now you're gonna give me more hormones, which is really gonna make me go off the freaking rocker. I'm gonna be crazy. I'm not gonna be able to even focus because I'm gonna be up, I'm gonna be down. My body's gonna have to adjust to all of these extra hormones that, you know, that's in my body. I really didn't wanna go that route. Another alternative for me was to take contraceptive, birth control, I try IUD or just take the pill form and I am totally against that. No shade to anybody who does take any birth control. That's just my personal feeling about it. I just read, I've seen, I've heard so many things that just weren't beneficial to a woman when taking birth control and I was just like, I don't feel comfortable putting things in my body that I didn't do all my homework on. I don't know the side effects, the long-term effects. It may work for right now, but what will it do to me later? I'm always thinking farther. That's that damn anxiety. Just didn't feel comfortable with that. And of course, other option is to take medication, stronger medication besides what I was already taking. And I am somebody again, who does not like that. I'm personally more of a holistic type of person. I'd rather do things that I know are more on the natural side instead of like man-made. I'd rather do home remedies, drink teas, and you know, change my diet, stuff like that, than to take a pill and I don't know, you know, what it's really doing to my body. And last treatment would be obviously to get a hysterectomy. Ugh, a hysterectomy, which really is something that weighs heavy on my heart. Just hearing the word is, whew, hysterectomy. At my age, I'm just like, whoa, I'm not ready for that. Sadly, the only real cure for adenomyosis is to have a hysterectomy to get rid of the uterus, get rid of all that. There you go. Um, and I am i don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready to go that route. I also know that I don't want to live like this for the rest of my life. Children are the most beautiful gift that God could ever give you, but yet they do a lot of damage on our body. They do a lot. Your body just never goes back to how it once was be after you know after you have children and that's okay just think about having a, a life growing inside of you and all your organs getting moved and shifted and tamper with with a baby inside of it there's just a lot of complications that can come with it a lot of women realize how much we put on our bodies when we're carrying children and how 
how important and how serious it can be to you know make sure that we take care of ourselves even after you know even after giving birth it's important to make sure that we take care of ourselves our our annuals and our checkups to make sure everything is how it's supposed to be still fairly young i still have a lot of energy motivation and i don't want this condition to affect my daily living i'm kind of on the fence of what i should do um, not only is it directed me a big surgery, but you have to realize that you can't have any more children. Hearing that I wouldn't be able to have children didn't have too much of an effect on me because I was blessed with three children, but I just don't know. You know, things can change. Your mind can change. I could be in a better situation, a better mind state, and I can say, you know what, hey, I want one more child. And I am still fairly young, so just thinking about that, I just don't want to live with regret or go into deep depression if I decide to go that route and now I am no longer able to have children, you know? I have to wait out, you know? I was already blessed with children. Do you wanna keep suffering with this or are you worried about having more children? On the brighter side of things, I could definitely get a pet. I just have to laugh and I have to stay positive about it because it's not life-threatening. I don't know, you know, what will happen if I don't go through with the surgery you know i did read some stuff but sometimes you just gotta stay off google because google will scare you like i've said google will have you in your thoughts google will have you running scared so i try to just give it to god i'm just gonna pray on it i'm just going to think long and hard about it and we'll take it from there i have to go for another follow-up appointment so i'll definitely keep you guys posted but i just wanted to come on here and let you guys know what's been going on with me and if you have experience anything like this if you have been feeling any type of discomfort in your body even if it doesn't have to pertain to this male or female go t go get it checked out don't wait until it's the last minute don't wait until you're feeling so so bad and it's really bad for you catch it before it gets worse and you know you'll feel better about it i feel like for me there was a reason why i was feeling all of this freaking pain all of this discomfort so don't wait don't wait. If you don't feel like something's right with your body, go get it checked out. Also, if you're somebody who has the same condition or you have really, really painful periods, feel free to comment down below or even message me, DM me, and, um, you know, we can get through this together. We got this. Whatever obstacles get thrown at us, we're going to handle it. We're going to jump right over it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up. If you guys can leave me some praying hands, just let me know that I got this. And with the help of you guys, I know that I can get through it all. I love you guys. Make sure you subscribe if you have not already subscribed. And I'll see you guys in my next video.